And now out right. on the field, here on comes him. Los Angeles. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. Oh, yeah. Uh, he'll go down, that looks like Gerald Everett fighting through that contact. The 30. It's a that looked exactly like something he would do. Uh, they lulled them to sleep there, so to speak. That was all set up by the running game, wasn't it? Another example of what all offensive coordinators tell us. When the running game's operating, it really opens up the playbook. And that's when they hit them with the play action. And you can see the defenders rushing towards the line of scrimmage, then scrambling back trying to cover. Couldn't get there in time. Well scripted. They had the big running play. Now the big passing play. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. I have to admit, I'm excited by that play call and the end result because this is a team that's down big early in the first value quarter green, and a green. lot of teams will just panic abandon the playbook and just start firing the ball all over the place it's way too early for that stick to what works for you down double digits and we talked about their game plan being both running in and he'll get into the end zone oh, there's one touchdown for gerald everett one gerald everett his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Rams have got this back to a one-score game. Dude is a weapon. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for oh, a touchdown. Oh, shit. Oh, how about this? No good. Just his second miss of the year, and our score will stay right where it is. Our defense needs to bear down. They don't even have their two running backs, man. Now a play fake here on first down. He's got a man on the crossing route. That's Moore. And he's finally taken down, and it's a big game there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. After one, 14-6 our score on EA Sports. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. He was trying to go back to more there. So you got to man up the receivers because they down. do not have receivers who they can separate. They kind of forced that one there, didn't he? It's almost like he predetermined where he was going to go with the football. Yeah, he wasn't really going through progressions. Oh. He wanted to go to his top guy. Nice you do deflection. That if you would have caught that. Well that. Yeah, they certainly will. They react very quickly to the thrown football. Didn't have a receiver open downfield. And as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It was way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Here's Wilson. Nice. Looks to throw, fires right side. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender is making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant to the flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but not a great happy. Point. They kept that flag in the back pocket. Brandon Cooks and the rest of the offensive crew trotting back into place out there. They've got to be thinking, how can we get him a little bit more involved here? Second quarter, you're down, and really, he's been out of the mix. I would agree with that, and oftentimes you hear, well, we're just taking what the defense is giving us, but sometimes that's just not good enough. Sometimes you have to take what you want, and that means getting him the football. Yeah, so far just a single catch in this game. Go, go. Mike's 50, Mike's 50. Throwing on second and three. Golf. Give credit Man, to KJ off White. Route. He was disrupting defensively. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point. Get your head around. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. Well, that was nice. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That good for 19 and a first down. 
Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. He's letting it fly for Cooks. Oh! Yeah, man, it's caught inside the oh, 10. Oh, yeah. Goff fighting Cooks Ooh. on a big play. 53 that yards. Was dope. He caught it and immediately Excellent got up execution, and, spun it. and now they're that set up nicely. Sick. Are they ever? Red zone? Oh, I my goodness. I wonder what the next play call is going to be because after a big Look play that like throw. that, a lot of teams like to use the momentum to launch another one. Oh, my goodness. That was a thing of beauty right there. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Goff going to give this one to Henderson, and that'll get him halfway there as he takes it from the six to the three-yard line. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football, but these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense, and they can add up as the game goes along. They control the clock, they control the ball, and that way you often control the game. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Listen, 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 listen. Mike 56, Mike 56. Now I'm just going to run it in. Not going to get greedy and get ground. stupid. This time with Gurley. And he takes it across for a Rams touchdown. Todd Gurley, his fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Rams are now just a two-point conversion away from tying this thing up. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness. you got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get the Just really go for two every time. Gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. So they go with a pass there on the two-point try and able to convert it, Charles. And a good job by the offense figuring out their two-point play and using it well. It's interesting how people are using the strategy nowadays, though, isn't it? It really is. And I don't know how much that one, that particular play factored in, but with the PAT moving back in 15-16, that kind of changed things, didn't it? It's really a part of everyone's strategy now when I talk with coaches and when we sit with them they always talk all right boys let's play defense just like we did last time in practice now something they never really did before Wilson the Seahawks take over now first and ten at their own 23 going on the ground with Homer and he's taken down but able to slip across the 35 give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also Homer give him the first play. down I don't know where he's coming from. this stage of the game, the run-pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. He's going to air one out. And that's caught inside the 35. 33 yards that time. I don't know how he threw that right in between Weddle and the offensive masterminds in this game, right? They draw up this I guess that's why he's Russell Wilson, he right? Perfect up on the board. But occasionally, sometimes you just say, throw it up and let him go get it. How about that play? Don't get nervous. On first and ten, it's Wilson. And Dixon over the middle. The completion good for three and it's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Wilson. Left side complete to Lockett. 12 yards there and a first down. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season. They got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. And they'll lose yardage here. Knocked back to the 19-yard line. Out of way, Corey. That'll set them back with a loss of three on the play. And that'll make this a second and 13. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. And to give this time to the tailback. And just a couple yards there down to the 17. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are right, better boys. tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? 
it's Wilson. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. So he got free of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to make it fourth down. Coming up at the half, a reminder, we go back to Orlando to check in with Jonathan Coachman. They'll have a look back at our first half, as well as a look ahead to what's coming up later this weekend. So the drive stalls out inside the 15 yard. We do have three timeouts. On first down, goal. Throw left side, complete to Cup. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. They'll operate from the 32 yard line here, second and three. They run out of the shotgun with Gurley. No way. Call it a gain of three. No way you would have done to that, move bro. The sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they'll get a chance to talk it over after picking up the first down. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and 10. From the 50, it's gone. That's complete to the tight end, Everett. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. A gain of four on the play, and all of a sudden here, it's third down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Third and two, gone. And the throw there going to be incomplete. I know coaches tell us all the time that having a powerful arm isn't the number one thing they look for in a quarterback. But when you're trying to throw inside routes and you need to put some heat on it, it helps to have the big gun. But in this case, just a little bit too much. No and way. He's not going to get the first. I don't even think he made it back to the line of scrimmage. Sean McVay's gamble does not pay off. And the Seahawks are going to take over the football. Even though they didn't get it, probably the right call. Too long for a field goal and just not a whole lot to gain from a punt there. Yeah, you wouldn't have really netted very much yardage if you punted the ball, right? And the thing about a field goal, and you know this from so much experience, the longer the field goal, the lower it comes out off the kick, right? Which means it's got a better chance of being blocked. So you're taking a chance either way. I like the fact they went for it. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. The Seahawks on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. Here it's third and three. Throwing is Wilson. He gets it to Brown. Good play. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Wilson will throw again. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll make it a second down. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first. Wilson hit, it's loose, it's out, fumble. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds oh, left in the first half. That's right. That's right. So on is Jason Myers. He's hit from as long as 58 in his career. They'll spot it at the 47, so call it a 57-yard attempt. That's running out of steam, and it won't get there. He left it just short. No good. So we, due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast. Skip time because I want to get back in this game. I'm down.
They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Fresh out of the locker room, they hit him with a gain of over 20. A big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and 10. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he works his way forward for about four up to the midfield strike. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down. A very solid gain on that play. Now it's Gurley. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. Keep pounding it to Bobby. Yeah, Keep pounding it to Bobby. Bobby. Wagner coming off a third straight all-pro season. Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now look, hey, if they just do that all the way down, football ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. They give him 12 yards and a first down. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So, so far on this drive, let me do this little bit of math here. Four plays, three first downs. That's a pretty good recipe for success. Stops short of the 25, and that second effort got him a couple extra. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. Let's talk about football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They'll find Everett there, complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. 16 yards, a first down. The fifth catch of the game for him there. Yeah, and the tight end position is now becoming a volume pass catcher. It used to be an occasional, right, safety valve. Throw one to him every so often, but mainly they want him out there to block. Nowadays, an integral part of the passing game, and they create such great mismatches that they often become the leader. And he will not throw it away. He goes I wasn't sure how to uh, well shy of the line slide. Of so that's a I didn't know how to slide. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. Well, this is something I may never understand. I don't get why a quarterback under duress who has a chance to get rid of the ball and save the yardage keeps it and runs out of bounds. Instead of an incomplete pass and no loss of yardage, it's a three-yard loss. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Only three yards on the catch. There. It's third down. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. That was an okay hook up there with his tight end, but unfortunately, they didn't get the kind of yards they had hoped for. That's going to bring up third down. The pressure drops off as they look to throw. And it's caught. And oh, he's going to be brought down That's by the face, face mask. mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. So they will accept the penalty and move forward. Automatic first down. All right, let's get uh, so Gerald Everett in the TD. So the about the one after the penalty, first and goal. A shotgun snap for goal. Yeah. And it's complete. Two TDs. in the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Need one more for that boy. Gerald Everett with his second touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And the Rams are going to jump back in front. And man, Charles, talk about zinging something in there. Those gloves, they help with one-handed catchers, the fun stuff. Any padding for a rocket like that? One would think so, but I'll guarantee you this. After that throw, his hands will hurt later. Not right now in the moment. He's just feeling... <laughs> that was beautiful. All right, D, let's stiffen up again. Nice tackle. And he nice will tackle. Lose yardage here back at the 23 yard line. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. Well, I know it goes against the instincts of the person catching the ball because all you're ever taught is catch the football and don't drop it. But drop it there. Yeah, in that situation, <laughs> dropping it would have been better. End up losing yardage even though they completed the pass. As good as a sack. Yeah, how about that? Although they won't get the same credit for it and it won't help them at contract time. 
an interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Right. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Credit that sack to Dante <laughs> Fowler, Jr. Mm. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive play. All right, let's run that ball again. Here we go. Slide 20. Here we go, D. Get up the field. Now golf on first down. Ah. And that'll be incomplete. Gerald Everett is tied in the intended Dang, receiver. That was wide open too. And that'll bring up second down. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined. But sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Well, they were unable to make anything really big out of that, but it's not a bad idea to find your tight end and give him an easy completion and keep moving things forward. Almost as bread and butter. What a catch. It's a good running back dive. What play. a beautiful catch. He's been big. Two touchdowns earlier. Now he's got a first down here. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. Oh, so what to speak. a... This kid they pick up is making plays. The play and the chains move. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley, but it's going to be second down. Uh, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. One quarter remains here in this Thursday night matchup. This is the National Football League on EA Sports. The Rams on third down. They have been superb. Five for six to this point. This is third and seven. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And he'll take this down just shy of the 25-yard line. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. But well, we just saw a great example of what we talked about with his All right, well, let's just uh, get the field goal then. We're up seven. Our defense has really started to lock down. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. They have pressure coming, and they got him once again. The defensive player of the year, Aaron Donald. And it'll be a second and long. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Got to assume this defense will be charging again here. It's second and 15. Wilson. It's complete to lock it. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me. I'm going to keep firing. To throw is Wilson. Completes it to Dixon. And the broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. That gain of nine buys them a new set of downs. 
Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no And it's so hard to get Aaron Donald in the zone, and then he gets so easily knocked out of it. Oh, yeah. Sack from the Rams defense. Corey Littleton leading the surge there as he drops him for a loss of six. The amount of stats that like. they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. To try again after the sack. Wilson, the reception good for seven. It's third down. They're going to go for it? Good throw, good catch, but I really like the route. The drag and being able to run away from defenders. Hard to stick with them for that long. Yeah, better against man than zone or... Better against man because now you're running away from someone and you're not running into a defensive yeah, player a in another zone. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. They got a punt. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. They have a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. Horrible kick. And our attention shifts Way to out. Todd Gurley. So after that hot start, the numbers here show the decline. What is the defense done adjustment-wise? Sometimes when you have a running back who's gotten off to a hot start, you've got to catch him before he really gets going. So you change what you do across the defensive front. Instead of the linebackers being back a few yards, you bring them up closer. It's what we call mugging on, the line son, of scrimmage. Really? Taking away a lot of blocking angles and gaps and maybe stopping him before he can get going. Mugging the line of scrimmage, okay. Okay. Yeah, in this case. No on oh, second down, it's Henderson, and he's going to be stopped up quickly. That's all they have. <laughs> Just a yard. That's literally the all they have is Bobby Wagner. That's it's so it. Annoying. That's what you want. Straight ahead. He's doing everything. Game. Just keep that clock ticking. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. That's going to be complete to his tight end, Everett. Let's go, let's go. It's a gain of three, and it gets him to first. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack finding his way open and completing the connection. And he'll be taken down, but Broken not before collarbone, he gets really? into enemy territory. And Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. Back, back, four down. Five, five. They'll fake the handoff, now gone. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. Shaquille Griffin knocking it away that time in coverage. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it, if you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming for. They tried to throw for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. It'll be a pickup of five, and that leaves them with five more. Third and five now. Well, the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right, but the problem for them is still within a possession, so they can't just sit on it running the ball. They'll have to find a way to throw it effectively as well. Yeah, Fourth exactly quarter, right. down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Rams football here as we get your reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Goff now looks to throw. Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. Oh, no, he lost the football. No way. And the Seahawks have picked it up. And his guys are going to get the How many times are you going to fumble, the dude? The 23-yard line. All these years we've been watching the game, oh I start to get to the down. sense that whenever it rains out, those guys have to touch the ball and carry it. They're extremely oh resentful God. about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here. So dumb. We just saw the fumble happen and on the And now Russell Wilson's going to be in the zone. Nine there right. on the first down completion. Wilson to pro. He's going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Now, now the Seahawks is going to use the first of their timeouts so as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. There's Wilson. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Brown. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. 
He's back to throw. Throw left side complete. That's more. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. He'll look to throw. Oh! And a crusher there as it's intercepted. Picked off by John Johnson. Picked off. Okay, partner. No surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The John receiver Johnson knows the route he's going to run. Pick. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. On first down, Henderson. Cover that ball up. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 ticks to go. I got to see how many, how much yardage Gerald Everett has. Because I got to get him to 150. He's at 126. He needs a 24 yard completion. Oh, in the football game. Here's what he needs. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Goff gonna throw it. Oh my God, he caught it. Him here as he pulls it in. We got this. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout. Did he get to? Did he get to 150 get on that one? 26 seconds to go in the football he game. He did. He got it. What a catch. What a so first and ten now hey. from the thirty. On the handoff, Henderson stopped at the twenty-four yard line after a game. Can't stop five. us now, baby. Charles, why didn't they just take the knee there? You're asking the question that I'm asking as well because we've seen a lot of football Let's where coaches go. decide maybe they get a little greedy. I don't know if they're doing it for stats or for what reason. We've seen it happen in college. And game NFL. over. The miracle of the Meadowlands. All they had to do was take a knee and the game was over. The Giants ran it one more time. Ball popped free. Philadelphia picks it up and wins the game. What year was that? 1978. I think it was in November. So the L.A. Rams with a victory here. And it was their defense that really made the statement after the break. They pitched the second half shutout. Yeah, think about the team that just got vanquished. They did score in the second John quarter. John Johnson with the game-sealing interception on Russell Wilson the in the fourth the quarter. No, I, but Clutch. what a second half, the adjustment, whatever they did in the locker room, it certainly worked. It certainly did, and you're exactly right. Whether it was an adjustment, whether it was just more focus on what they planned to do going in, whether they just played better, whatever it was, it all came together in the second half and no points were allowed that's a great way to close them out so for the rams they boot yeah i'm not going to listen to that <laughs> i think we got Ger uh, gerald everett's this is the development up. trait. Superstar and superstar X-Factor players will progress faster over time. Players can improve their development trait by being one of the top performers in the league at their position. This is the abilities tab. Here you can see what abilities a player has and what effects they have in game. Abilities are available to both superstar and superstar X-Factor players. Unlock ability slots by improving the player's overall rating. This player has a zone ability. This is a powerful ability that can be activated when the player completes in-game objectives. Only X-Factor players will have zone abilities. All right. Cool. Look at his abilities. Outside zone guru and arm bar. Got it.
We'll have to see if Gerald Everett, uh, I'm pretty sure I got his, uh, we had to get 150 yards receiving. Let's look and see. What did I tell you, coach? I said I was one of the best players on this team, and I think I proved it out there today. Keep feeding me the ball. Dev trait upgrade. Joe Everett now has the superstar development trait. Progress faster than before and can use superstar abilities. Dope. Dope. <sighs> Whatever. We got Gerald Everett involved. We had to. Of course, Todd Gurley's get broke his collarbone now. Great win this week, coach. You guys have started awfully fast this season. The fan base is thrilled, but we're all waiting to see if the success continues through October, November. Good luck. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to cut this stream off for today. We've made really good progress. Uh, we won against the Browns and the Seahawks. And uh, let's see, what did we do today? I think we beat the Saints. We beat the Browns. We simmed the Buccaneers game, which we lost. And we went and uh, beat the Seahawks. So we went three. We've won three games and we lost one. This one being the simmed game. And uh, we just unlocked superstar ability for uh, Gerald Everett, our tight end. So that is really cool. And uh, I'm probably going to cut the stream off now, but I'll be back on tomorrow, which is Saturday. And I hope to see you all there. Bye-bye.